Hello, welcome to TH Makes, and welcome to part two of um, a video looking at um, how you can use your gel plate to create backgrounds for your artwork. Part one, um, if you've seen that, um, great. If you've not, I'll link it above now. Dealt with how to create very subtle, soft backgrounds that are great for kind of transferring delicate drawings onto, printing onto, or drawing directly onto. This video we're going to look at exactly the same skills in terms of um, how you part ink up your gel plate, overlay and overlap to extend your working space um, on your paper, but we're going to be using much richer colours, much heavier textures, much heavier tones to produce mono prints that then speak to us and offer possibilities for a direction you could take a piece of artwork all right let's get to it okay similar textures surfaces are going to work just as well for this as in the last video but i've also tried some other stuff like a rubbing wax crayon on some wood using some bolder fonts of text and again you'll notice in comparison to the last video much darker tones um, again, back in with the rub in there to get some nice heavy textures. Um, I've used some splats of diluted acrylic just like in the last video. And you can see they're already getting some much heavier, grittier textures. Right, a difference with this technique to the last video is, um, whereas I'm using similar materials, I'm trying to overlap a bit more directly so my surface gets denser. Once you've built a bit of density, you can then kind of branch out into the other parts of the paper to fill up that working space. Okay, this is the point I'd stop and see what the piece is kind of speaking to me. It's quite industrial, quite urban. So I'm gonna now um, use this uh, as a, a kind of basis for building up some text over the top of, and I've done this in oil pastel, and I'm now transferring this um, again, just overlapping, but kind of opening up even more space on the sheet. So again, I'm pausing and kind of seeing what it's saying to me. So um, having pondered this for a little while, I'm thinking it will look really good with some nice fine drawing over the top. So I went into a sketchbook. I've got this little drawing I did that I've been wanting to do something with. So I'm going to flip my background to kind of portrait and I'm gonna add a few more collaged features. Right, so here I'm using some folded A4 paper, stacking some tissue paper inside, and I'm gonna cut some discs that are gonna be like kind of traffic lights, the traffic lights that we get over here in the UK. Um, that's just gonna be one more layer of kind of graphic feature before I start my drawing. These I'm just kind of placing, composing, and applying with some gel medium. The drawing itself was loads of fun. Got to use some new pens. I'd bought um, 0.5 and 1 mil drawing pens, not only in black, but I found some with grey, which are lovely to use. Um, just brilliant um, to be able to use something from your sketchbook. You know, everyday objects I find, not everyone does, um, but I find really fascinating subjects to draw from. And, um, you know, thanks Manet and Corbet for making that acceptable in art back in the 19th century. Um, so there you go, just a bit of time lapse of me, um, as close as I can, but not worrying too much about total accuracy, transferring that sketchbook drawing onto my gel printed background. Um, using some uh, tubed watercolors there, just to lift up a bit of highlight, um, just to create a tiny bit of contrast to lift that drawing in front of my background and push some of those heavy textures and um, colours and tones a bit more into the background. Well, there you go, first one done. I hope you like that. Uh, next one, let's have a look. Um, so, using string this time um, to get a slightly more fluid shape and Hessian again built up my background and what's it saying to me this time? Well, this time I'm thinking text. So, what I've done is this. In a wax crayon on a standard bit of A4 paper written out some lyrics of the song that was on as I was making this video um, nice big font and inking up mixing a color that I know is going to look good over this background and you'll see that as part of the transfer I've, 
I've tried a little trick. I've made a little stencil window that's going to block out part of my transfer. This shape I'm planning on placing a little illustration into as you'll see. Okay that's where I'm up to. Now this little window I've left I've decided I'm going to try and sort of accentuate a little bit more by just collaging in a layer of tissue paper to slightly change the colour and um, not quite decided yet or I hadn't decided at this point um, but I was thinking either like a little hand drawn illustration or um, a lino cut. Um, a lino cut is what I end up going for as you'll see. So just tracing that shape off in tracing paper and again the same trick as with the traffic lights I'm going to fold this in half and use that to help me cut out an accurate shape in tissue paper. Okay shape traced, fold some tissue in half that was just going to give me a duplicate in case I make any mistakes or I want to kind of rotate the orientation of my illustration. Always try and give yourself as many possibilities. So I decided to do a little lino stamp for my illustrative feature. Of course you can draw directly, do some image transfer. There's videos on those techniques on my channel. Just have a look, check them out. Really good fun to do. To do. Of course you could just collage a piece on uh, from a magazine or a, an old encyclopedia, some text, whatever you like. Um, just have fun, play with it. So there I am, a little time lapse of me just doing the fiddly work of um, carving out my key illustration is going to be very simple, a kind of dark tone directly onto that tissue paper collaged on. Okay, when that was cut, um, I applied just as before in the last example with the traffic lights, applied my pre-cut shape with some gel medium, get that stuck down nice and smooth, let that dry and ready to lino print straight over the top. Okay final stage inking up with a little grey as I said before very cheap water-based block printing ink um, only need a tiny amount obviously because we're printing a, a very small lino stamp um, and yeah as you see comes out fairly well this was very much an experiment could be techniques I will come back to but definitely elements of it um, I'm very much liking like the little windows um, to create a, a little negative space to work into I kind of like the oversized text um, yeah fantastic so I'm testing here um, just to see how the the lino stamp prints up burnishing it off with a wooden spoon and you'll see that all good to go looks pretty good and inking up again getting it on there. I've got a really useful tip for you here if you're using um, small collage kind of lino stamps as I'm doing here if you get a piece of tape stick it to your um, uh, some upholstery or your trousers or whatever just to take some of the heavy attack off it just to fix your lino in place then you can flip it and burnish it properly um, otherwise you know when you flip it it might move might fall off it just help secure it as long as you've taken the tack off that masking tape you should be able to peel it off your work without causing too much damage and let's have a look there you go not too bad okay I've been rambling on for ages you can see why I made this video in two parts because there was quite a lot I wanted to communicate and loads I wanted to share with you and I'm sure there's some stuff in there that you can take out kind of adapt to your own ends all right, as ever, if you enjoyed the video, remember, like, share, subscribe, comment below. And I look forward to seeing you very soon for a new video. Take it easy. Ta-da.